Dear friends in Christ, Mandy Harvey wanted to be a singer her whole life long. So after high school, she wound up applying to Colorado State University and she got accepted and she signed up for all of the classes that would make her a pop star. And things were going well. She was a good singer. But then she started having a hard time hearing her professors. And when she really knew something was wrong was when she was sitting down at a test and at the end of the test you were supposed to listen for some songs and then write down words about what you heard. And all of a sudden she saw her classmates get up and leave. They had finished. And she had never even heard the songs begin. A rare infection had left her deaf at age 19. And you can imagine how that would kind of sink your dreams of becoming a professional singer. Mandy thought so. She thought her dream was over. She was depressed. She dropped out of school. She went home. She thought, who am I? Who's someone like me to be a singer? I'm deaf. I can't do it. Have you ever asked that question? Who am I to do something like this? Why would you ask me to do that? We are asked to do lots of things in this life, but one of the things that we talk about here in church, and we just heard it in the gospel, is that Jesus asks us what? To follow him. He asks us to follow him. And does that question ever make you go, me? Who am I? Who am I to do something like that? That's how Moses felt. In the Old Testament reading that we read a little bit earlier, he felt like, who am I to do something like this? God had come to him personally and said, all right, Moses, here's what I want you to do. I want you to lead my people Israel out of Egypt to the promised land. And Moses said, ah, me? Does that surprise you? This is Moses we're talking about. The guy in the movie The Ten Commandments with the super long prophet beard, with the epic prophet hair. The guy with the deep voice who did wind up defying Pharaoh and leading Israel to the promised land. Shouldn't Moses have said, Ah, yes, God, I've been expecting you to ask me. I'm just the man for the job. He didn't. He said the opposite. Because before Moses had been a part of all those Sunday school stories and the plagues and the parting of the Red Sea and the promised land... Moses was a man who really had lost his way. Forty years before this, what we read, that's when Moses thought he was the guy. He had been raised in Egypt, but he knew he was an Israelite. And so after 40 years, he went out to the Israelites and he thought, I'm going to put a stop to this. A stop to the oppression and the slavery. And when Moses actually saw an Egyptian taskmaster whipping an Israelite to death, Moses got so angry that he killed the Egyptian. And here's where Moses thought the Israelites would follow him. He thought this would be a start to a big revolution and they would pick him as their leader and then he could lead them to freedom. But when Moses came back the next day, he found two Israelites arguing and he tried to be the leader. He tried to say, stop fighting your brothers. And they said, who are you? Who are you to be a leader over us? Who are you? And Moses thought, uh-oh, who am I? They rejected him, and Pharaoh tried to kill him, so Moses had to run. He ran into the wilderness, and he was long gone. He served as a shepherd for 40 years. So after 40 years, then God comes to him. At 80 years old, 
God draws Moses gently through that miracle, the burning bush. He doesn't overwhelm him with his presence at first. He draws him with this amazing sight. He brings Moses to the bush. Then he humbles Moses by saying, take off your sandals. This is holy ground. You're in God's presence. And Moses is so scared, he doesn't even look up at God. And then God asks Moses to lead his people to the promised land. Moses, now it's time. I'm calling you. Listen to what God is asking you to do. Moses' response, Who am I? Who am I? And as he stood in the presence of a holy and perfect God, Moses was terrified of the answer to that question. Who was Moses? He was a murderer. A man who had failed God 40 years before and had been a shepherd for 40 years. Who was Moses? The kind of person that God would never want to lead his people. At least that's what Moses thought. Who am I? Have you ever asked that question with what God asks you to do? He hasn't asked you to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. But he has asked you the same thing he asked Matthew in the gospel. He said, follow me. Follow me. Believe in me. And live your life out of faith in me, always putting me first. Does that command make us want to go, who am I? A lot of objections can come. Moses had lots of them when God talked to him. And sometimes we can have objections when Jesus says, follow me with everything that you have. We can say, me? I'm too old or or, I'm too young. I can't do it. Not with the things that I think that nobody knows about. Not with the things that I struggle with doing and not doing. Or maybe you think, there's just something about you that God wouldn't want someone like you to follow him. I can't. Maybe those are your objections. Maybe you have other ones. But I think when Jesus asks us to follow him, and then we're confronted with something like the holy presence of God, like Moses was, we can say, who am I? So how does God answer that question? Well, how did he answer Moses? Moses asked God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God answered, I will certainly be with you. And this will be the sign to you that I am the one who sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you will all worship God at this mountain. Did you hear God's answer? Moses said, Who am I? And God said, I will be with you. In other words, Moses, you're asking the wrong question. Not who am I, but who is God? Moses caught on a little bit, so then he asked God, Okay, well, if I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me what is his name, what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. In other words, Moses, don't worry about who you are or who you were or who you are going to be. Worry about who I am. That's what God told Moses to worry about. I am. This is a name that God gives himself. I am who I am. I will be who I will be. I will never change. Time may tick by, but God never does. This is the name you're reading when you read in your Bibles and you see Lord in all capital letters. That comes from the word He is. God is who He is. So who is He? He told Moses, I am the God of your fathers. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What kind of God is that? That's a God who makes promises and keeps them. 
who makes promises to people like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, they weren't perfect people. He makes promises to people like that, and then he fulfills them. And he makes the biggest promise of all to send a Savior, and he keeps that promise. That's the God who is. Moses really had changed a lot from confidence to despair through those 40 years, but God hadn't. God told him, I've been watching the whole time. I've known all the bad things that have hap- been happening to the Israelites, and I know what's been going on with you, Moses, because God is a God who watches over his people, a God who draws his people, a God who shapes his people and even calls his people to follow him and do what he asks. That's the kind of God God was for Moses. This former murderer who felt like I could never serve God, who couldn't even look up in God's presence, what did God do with him? God was with him. And what happened? Miracles. Salvation. Israel brought from the world's superpower, defying Pharaoh, out to the promised land. Moses, buried by God himself and brought to be with God forever. Who is Moses? Doesn't really matter. Who is God? That's the question God invites us to ask, too. Whenever he asks us to do something that seems like we can't do, Who is God? If God is a God who drew Moses, who shaped him, who made him holy through his salvation, who used him in his kingdom and brought him to heaven, then God is still that same God for you. A God who draws you gently, not through a burning bush, but through his words, something Less intimidating, but just, just as powerful. He's a God who's always been watching over you and shaping you through whatever hardships you've had. He's a God who invites you to come into his holy presence and take off whatever you might have to come before him. He says, take off your sandals, take off anything that you might carry in front of me. You don't need it. You just need me. He brings you into his holy presence and then calls you to follow him. How can you follow a God like that? Just like Matthew did. Jesus went to Matthew, a bad person, a tax collector, known as a sinner. Jesus went to him and said, follow me. And what did Matthew do? He got up and followed him. How? Because he knew who Jesus is. He knew who Jesus is because Jesus is the I am who I am. God himself who came into the world for people just like Matthew, just like Moses, and just like us. He came into the world, the eternal, unchanging God who came for sinners and nothing could change that. No torture, No nail, no whip, no cross, no amount of sin, no burden of sin could ever change the fact that Jesus is the God who saves sinners like you, like me, and says, follow me because of who I am. The more we hear that, the more Jesus trains us to ask that question. Not who am I, but who I am. The impossible happens sometimes. Mandy Harvey, she was deaf. And two weeks ago, she went on the nationwide talent show, America's Got Talent, and she wowed the judges and amazed everybody who listened. She got the golden buzzer which sends all the golden glitter down and all the shining lights and she gets sent straight on to the semifinals of the competition because she can sing. By training her vocal folds with muscle memory and feeling the vibration through her feet, she's an amazing singer. Huh. I 
I thought it couldn't happen, but it did. Even more amazing, even more impossible, is that God can ask people like us to follow him in faith and live a life of faith. And even more impossible than Mandy Harvey becoming a professional singer, we follow. We follow Jesus not because of who we are, but because of who God is. I am who I am, and he will always be with you. Amen.